So you want to go to Florida and you want to hunt Osceola's. I don't blame you, I do too. I get asked about Florida probably more so than any other location. That's why we're going to put together this little video here on some strategies, how we adapt to hunting down there and some things that we look for. We'll start from the top and let you know that when it breaks daylight in Florida, everything's going to be wet and for the most part stays wet. You hunt around a lot of water, the ground is going to move up under your feet and that's the first thing I want to touch on is the wet sandy soil. These turkeys leave a calling card as soon as they hit the ground in the morning and that's something that you need to pay attention to in Florida more so than anywhere else. The sign is a lot of times wiped away every day by daily rainfall so a lot of the sign that you'll be able to find is extremely fresh and this is something that you really need to stash away and learn from. Uh, these turkeys are telling you a story every day and you can figure out where they're roosting, where they're feeding, where they're loafing, how they're getting from one place to the other. So as long as you're paying attention to exactly what the ground is telling you, you can put yourself in the right position. Here's a situation on day seven. That was a big cobbler track back there beside that. That was a fresh big cobbler track. Oh yeah, the place is littered with people tracks. There's boot tracks, buggy tracks. Some strut sign. Squirrels boot bread. Strut sign. The squirrel and I are going in right at dark and we're able to find some fresh gobbler tracks and some strut sign on top of some buggy tracks even. That just lets us know that there's a gobbler that's still alive. It's calling that place home. The very next day on day eight of the Penhody Project, that's the 2018 season, we were able to get in that same area, actually standing in the same roadway, and we're able to put ourselves within earshot of this turkey who decides to gobble a little bit this morning. We're able to get old man Joe right in the right spot, and we were able to kill that turkey. We can hop over to episode four. Walk right up to here and drug his wings. But I mean, a bunch of turkey tracks, but yeah, just as many people tracks. So, I mean, it looks like a flipping turkey, a turkey 5K ran through here. And last year was pretty wet. Everything was uh, underwater last year, but we were able to find this roadway that was somewhat dry and we were able to find a ton of turkey tracks in it. Quite a few people tracks, but just due to the volume of turkey tracks and the extremely fresh gobbler tracks I was able to find in that road, felt pretty confident there was still a gobbler in the area to be killed. It was a couple days later, we were in the same area here again, just kind of tiptoeing around all that sign we found when me and Courtney were able to hear a turkey gobble a couple times in the evening very next morning, we're able to get in there and kill that turkey. All due to the sign we were able to find in this roadway and trusting the story that it was telling us that there was still another gobbler in there to be killed. The next thing we want to touch on is hunting uncomfortable. And I'm not just talking about wet feet and sand in your bridges because that will happen. But I'm talking about uncomfortable as in setups. We're used to putting her back against a tree. We're used to being able to see 35, 40, 45 yards. That doesn't happen much in Florida. A lot of times you're hunting in uncomfortable scenarios where you're hunting in tall grass. Grass that's just as tall as the turkey is and that's the best setup. Look in episode seven. We are uh, in grass about waist high and it's just not comfortable, not something that you're used to doing if you're hunting in typical turkey terrain. Another thing is uh, hunting uncomfortable is water. You're going to hunt over water. There's a number of these in the Penhody Project. We can take a peek at episode six that we just mentioned earlier. It's going to be a wet one. And in that situation, we end up having to hunt right over a flag pond that is full of water. I still battle with it just as much as anyone. I do not like sitting up over that much water. I always try to find the shallowest and or the dry spot or whatnot, but it's just not possible in Florida a lot of times. Episode six is a perfect example. This turkey flies down and walks through ankle deep water to us and we were able to kill the turkey in what was just an extremely uncomfortable setup for me. Another example is day seven of the 2018 Penhody Project. Here again, we're hunting over water. This turkey flies down and lands in water and walks in water all the way to us. Another 
one of those uncomfortable setups. Typically, I would never set up there if I was in anywhere else in the country and didn't want to, even in Florida. But that's what we were given. That's the hand we were dealt, and we just made do with it. And as you can tell, it worked out. So you've got to be ready to go to Florida and hunt in uncomfortable setups. These birds live in thick vegetation, and they live in the water. And the last thing I want to touch on is dialing back the aggression a little bit because there's just flat out not as many turkeys. When I find a gobbler, whether it be his tracks, I hear him gobble, I'm able to confirm that I've got a turkey there to hunt, I will hunt that turkey like he is the last turkey in the world. If I find fresh gobbler tracks or I hear one gobbling or I find a gobbler, I really approach him with caution because I do not want to bump that turkey. I do not want to send him into doing something else. I want him to continue to stay in whatever cypress head or pine land or where he's decided to call home I want him to stay there because I'm learning more about him with those tracks and stuff that he's leaving me every single day in other areas of the country I may be you know make an aggressive move a risky move because if I bump him I'll just move on down the road and strike another one that's not the situation in Florida you can check out episode number five from last year Typically in those situations, when I have a turkey that hangs up out there that, that long, you'll see me, especially with the amount of vegetation that I have and the stuff that I have for cover, I'll make a pretty risky move in order to try to get within shotgun range of that turkey. But on this day, we were learning more about that turkey and I thought it was more important to just make sure that we didn't bump him out of that area because I was confident with the more time that we spent in that area with him, we would eventually get an opportunity. Another example is episode eight of last year where I was able to slip in on this gobbler on the limb and watched him fly down in a dried flag pond. And those pine trees on the other side of those palmettas there. I need a visual on him about three different times. He's been in the same spot in the center of this pond. Right out there toward that dark grass. You can see all the shade right here beside me. That's where I'm hoping he should come back to. Typically, I make an aggressive move if I could keep my eyes on a turkey that long, but it was more important to me to just take inventory as to where this turkey was at and make sure that he stayed in this home area, the same place that I found him the day before, and learn more about him because here again, I was confident that he was going to stay there in that same general area, and if the more homework I did on him, the more opportunities that I was eventually going to have. I got that finicky rascal. You'll probably dig right back into the Pinhoti project and find where I've contradicted myself. I don't doubt it. I'm sure I can think off offhand of some situations where I did that. But as a whole, I typically hunt a little bit slower. And there's one particular day in the Pinhoti project that kind of encompasses everything we've discussed here. And that was day two of the 2018 season. On this particular day, we hunted a gobbler that Squirrel had found about a week prior. He had went in there, let the wet ground kind of tell him the story. He was able to find this gobbler's tracks and some strut sign. He was able to return a couple days later and even heard him gobble in that same general area a handful of times. So essentially, he was able to build that inventory uh, due to letting that wet ground tell the story and learning uh, from the sign that the gobbler left. And then when it came to hunting that turkey a week or so later, we did exactly what we had just discussed. We hunted uncomfortable. If you look at the setup we had on that turkey, we were sitting behind a tree. There was no big trees to put your back against and we were hunting in grass that was over waist tall and it was just sagging with water. None of that's typical. That's not your standard turkey setup. And then as far as hunting guarded or hunting methodical, that's exactly what we did. When the turkey did not gobble off the roost, we trusted the sign that squirrel had found and we hunted methodically we hunted slow because this is the only turkey in the area this is the only turkey that we were aware of that was living in the area so we knew if we bumped him that we were going to be out there was no gonna gonna be no other game in town we were able to get inside that turkey's bubble without bumping him was able to strike him and here again get him killed so
Well, I hope somebody out there found those little nuggets helpful, and hopefully if anybody's headed south for opening day to hunt Osceola's, hopefully that'll be helpful and make uh, your trip down there enjoyable. Uh, you guys stay tuned for the next one. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but hopefully we'll drum up some other topics and tactics and stuff to share with you here soon.